Hey Jules Bless Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new I know you can benefit. So the last couple of days I've been talking about the inner critic which is definitely something that I am challenged by on a regular basis and it was kind of funny because I was doing my video and I had mentioned in the previous video the first one I did on inner critic that I was doing it for myself that it was something that I struggle with and that I hoped other people could relate. So then I ended up doing a second one and my husband was listening because <laughs> I didn't ask him to like leave the room. And then at the end of it, he's like, oh my gosh, what a bunch of baloney. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, your video. And I said, seriously, why? It's on an inner critic. And he's like, yeah, that's a message you need. <laughs> said oh my gosh yeah I indicated that it was for me he thought I was sitting here talking mastery that's a no if there's any chance that I sounded like I already knew <laughs> how to deal with the inner critic yeah I said hun I share stuff on my channel because it benefits me and I hope it'll benefit others <laughs> can you dig it ah oh, he so knows me Anyway, I'm going to take a break from the inner critic today because I wanted to share a different talk. Um, and this is by Brooke Castillo, and she's the one that I refer to uh, for my urge jar. And again, I, I actually have that video um, highlighted on my front page um, that I did on the urge jar because it's so good. And my gosh, look at how many urges. I mean, this is like 150 urges or something, maybe 140 urges on how many times I have said no. And an urge jar is only for good. You only celebrate. It's never take away from, it's never bad news. It's only saying I, and it actually says urge jar, overcame an urge, yay me. So I happily add urges and I was gonna actually add some more urges today <laughs> because I have been challenged. I'm having a bit of a cold. I I didn't want to mention it in yesterday's video. And I, I you guys were probably like, she looks off. Um, because I was deciding that I was gonna affirm a positive affirmation that I don't have a cold, but I do, and that's okay. You know, it's what I love about it when I'm eating right is that the colds are very brief. You know, what used to hang on for a week or three weeks even if it became uh in my chest is now like a day three days you know so i want to praise myself because whenever i don't feel well i want to tempt myself and um usually give myself something that is not in my best interest so i actually had a couple opportunities today to leave the house to have my husband bring me something to go in his cupboard instead of mine and i did not do that so i'm proud of myself for that but yeah i have a little bit of a cold but i am not fretting when i think of how people are truly struggling in this world my nephew um dean excuse me perfectly dropped something into the trash <laughs> My nephew, Dean, you know, who is still puzzled and wondering what the heck happened, you know. Um, but I can't wait to hear the news today because he is at that new clinic and um, the real doctors were supposed to be there today and assess him. And, and I pray that that happened. And it is supposed to be his best opportunity. And I'm just trusting God on that. But anyway... This is from Brooke Castillo of the Life Coach School, and on Friday, she sends out a letter just once a week on Friday, and this is her Friday letter, and it's called Friday Coach, like an activity versus results. Okay, so yeah, she's talking about how just because we're busy with things doesn't mean we're getting results, and it's so important to recognize that, and I thought this was a really good talk. So it says, doing something isn't the same as creating something. An activity isn't a result. And I really appreciate that because I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. I mean, I can show you that my lesson plan book is full, but where's the result, you know? And do I need to come about it in a different way? I'm starting to panic. The year is going very quickly all of a sudden, and I don't know if I'm doing right by my students. You know, I hadn't taught sixth grade for a really long time. The first trimester 
was almost a loss because I was double teaching both classes and only the two primary subjects and not all the subjects. And then the second trimester, which we're not over, like we're mid trimester, um, has been me finding my way. And, and it's very hard because that inner critic jumps in and says that I'm not doing well enough, that I'm not enough, that others could do better. And, and I've always prided myself more on moving children in an understanding of who they are and how to approach life far more than academics, especially in these early years of their life where they're establishing who they are. Um, I focus on that. Every child grows interpersonally in my class, if not academically. But of course, academics matter, and we are coming up on state testing before we know it. So I thought this one was so good. And it says, doing something isn't the same as creating something, and activity isn't a result. In my company, we like to plan for results. If your calendar is filled with action, you may or may not get a result. If your calendar is filled with results, you will get results. So it says, this is a hard adjustment for people when they come to work for me. They want to give me a to-do list, and I want them to give me a result list. What will the activity produce? That's what I want to know. I don't want to know what you did at work today. I want to know what the result was of your working. That's what really struck me right there, because I was like, yeah, I can show hour to hour what my kids did, but what are the results of what they did? And are we getting to where we need to go? And the answer is no. I was looking at their math scores and stuff today. I wanted to cry. <laughs> we are doing a lot, but the results are not there. I have to go at it, about it a different way. So it says, um, what are you actually producing? What are you creating? What assets do we have now from you working? Who's being benefited by all the supposed hard work I'm putting in? I'm not seeing the results. If you can't answer these questions, you're doing it wrong. Action is not valuable if it doesn't produce value. Having a meeting, why? What is the result you want to create? Yeah, and that's what I was freaking out about because I'm supposed to be going to a bunch of meetings next week for my children who are not making it but I don't even know what it is I'm asking of them. I can show what they're not doing. I can't prove what I need them to be doing. Like I'm in a bad place right now where I want to cancel that meeting and say, I'm not ready for it. But part of the fear is the year's going so quickly. Will I not do right by those students by getting them the help they need? So I'm like in a quandary, seriously. So it says, why are you having the meeting? If you can't answer that question, cancel the meeting. I might have to cancel that meeting, and it's every month anyway, and try for March when I have a better sense of something. So it says, desire, forgive me, I can speak. Des oh my gosh, wow. This is when I know. <laughs> Do you ever just have that fog in your brain? I'm fighting something. Yesterday, I could barely open my eyes. Today, praise God, they're open, but I can't get my words decide yay decide the result you want first then decide what you need to do to get it not the other way around oh it's so true uh i'm probably going to cut and paste this into the description of this video but i want to go through it one more time because i think it's so powerful activity versus results doing something isn't the same as creating something because yeah, you can totally be in the activity of something, but what is the end product? Because if you can't get to the end product, it wasn't created, right? Doing something isn't the same as creating something. An activity isn't a result. In my company, we plan for results. If your calendar is filled with action, you may or may not get a result. If your calendar is filled with results, you will get actions. I wish they expanded on that a little more because it's a tiny bit confusing to me. Like, how do you list results? <laughs> I guess you, you write down your end goal, right? And then you figure out how to get to it. It's like, we used to do that with lesson planning. We would go backwards to try and find out what we had to get to the end result. I get that. Um, this is a hard adjustment for people when they come to work for me. They want to give me a to-do list. I want them to give me a result list. 
What will the activity produce? Oh, same thing with our eating, right? What is it that we're doing to get to that end goal? And like for me, I my goal is still to be completely normal weight, which if I look at the original, the original weight list, like back from the 19, like 20s and 30s and not the ridiculous ones that have been modified for the nonsense of today, a standard person by all accounts, the first hundred pounds was I mean, the first five feet is 100 pounds for men and women. And then each additional inch, depending on your bone structure, and people play with that, is three for someone who's petite, four for just an average boned person, and five for a large boned person. And I'm not sure how many people have large bones. (laughs) I'm not sure. I do come from an Irish Norwegian build and they're stocky, but I am content to say the four, four. I do not believe that I am petite in any way. And I don't believe even my skeleton will show that, but I'm willing to hang with four. Um, So then it says, you are supposed to say for each inch, whether it's three, four, or five pounds per inch. So if you are five feet two and you're petite, you could weigh about 106. If you're big boned, and again, few people fall into that, it might be around 110. So I'm five seven, and seven times four is 28. And I said I'm about middle. And so I think 128 for five seven is exactly right for me. So how do I get to that result? And for some people, they say you literally look at what a person is supposed to consume at that weight already, and then you go ahead and consume that, and your body will eventually fall to that. I think that's kind of a dangerous uh, way to do it in the sense that for my body as I am now, if I start eating that amount, it might think that I'm in starvation mode and hold on to the weight. So... I'm content to eat between 14 and 1600 calories, try and favor the 1400 calories and know that 128 is about 1280 calories because it's generally about 10 calories a pound. Um, So I'm kind of there, but you know, what about the exercise for a person of that size? What am I doing to get to that result? So I understand that. So there is a way to be looking at that even with our food and with whatever our end game is, and mine is just happy, healthy, strong, lean body, content to eat, enough to live, and not all of the rest. So it says, um, what will the activity produce? That's what I want to know. I don't want to know what you did at work today. I want to know what the result was of you working. What are you producing? What are you creating? What assets do you have now from you working? If you can answer these questions, you're doing it wrong. I'm sorry, if you can't answer these questions, you are doing it wrong. Action is not valuable if it doesn't produce value. Yeah, people are spinning their wheels. You know, I was watching that show, The 600 Pound Life. (laughs) And I do watch that because, I mean, gosh, I can so relate to so many of their stories. But often they'll go into that doctor and there was a goal of how much weight they were supposed to lose. And they'll sit there and say, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I I mean, I was doing my, I mean, I was doing, well, guess what? First of all, you're full of it. (laughs) And second, whatever you were doing isn't working. So what are you going to do to change it, right? I mean, I told you guys a few years back, I stopped going to the doctor because I was lying. You know, the doctor was spending all this time trying to figure out what was wrong with me. I knew what was wrong with me. I totally knew. I was binging. I was uh, eating wrong. I was up to no good. I didn't need a doctor to try and figure that out. You know, I finally decided that I was never going to go in again for help if I wasn't living in my truth. If I wasn't truly puzzled as to why my body was diseased, because I knew why. And it was a really good decision. (laughs) So why, um, if you're going to decide to have a meeting, why? What is the result you want to create? Like if I just go in and want to tell this committee about the problem with a child, but I don't even have a plan to help that child, why am I wasting their time? If I truly have applied everything I could and I'm not getting results, well then sure, let them give me additional ideas. But if I'm not at that point, I have no business being in that meeting. So cancel the meeting. Does 
it's so interesting. I'm having the trouble with the word decide. I'm accidentally saying decide. I'm just tired. I know I'm tired and that's valid because I'm pushing through even though I don't feel well. Decide the result you want first. Then decide what you need to do to get it. Not the other way around. All right. What do you guys think of that? What parts were you touched by? I thought it was brilliant. Again, I'll cut and paste it into the uh, description of this video, but it's what I needed to hear today. You know, I need to turn it around. Tick tock. I was taking the test with the California State Test today for my students, and there were a bunch of things I have not touched on. And sadly, the pacing guide will not even get me there before the test, which is why I was taking the test so that I could like jot down some notes and say, wow, I have to put this in there. Um, but yeah, I have to stop doing so much without any result that matters. Anyway, this is a lot to think about. Oh, I have great plans for an amazing healthy dinner. I've got beautiful greens and I made a really fun soup. And I hope it works out because it was one of those rainbow carrots, you know, the heirloom carrots, all the different carrots. And then I was chopping up some fresh tomatoes in there. And what I'm really digging right now, which is that smoked paprika, it just gives such a hearty flavor that just makes me feel like I really got to eat something yummy. And I have that um, heating uh, in my whatever it's called. <laughs> That's how off I am. Uh, I'm going to breathe my dehydrator. It's in my dehydrator at 115 degrees. And I'm hoping it'll only take a couple hours to warm up. But I'm just going to have some warm soup because, again, I wanted to comfort myself. And I am going to have that over my greens. I'm trying to get all my homework done. You'd be so proud of me. It is literally only a quarter to three in the afternoon. And we didn't have school today because it's President's Day. But I am getting this video done and I am going to get to bed on time because I'm going to do different to get different. Cheers to Miss Raw, who always encourages that in my head. All right, like if you like, join us if you haven't. Sorry, it was kind of scattered, but I just wanted to share all of that. Leave comments below. And more importantly, know that I prayed for you and that you're blessed.